So good morning from my side, Martin Minkler speaking. Welcome to our MCHAM talk on 26th of June, the last one before the holiday break of July and August. And it's really a pleasure to welcome you all today for the next hour. And also welcome Walter Zingli, our keynote speaker today. I also want to welcome our friends of Screenforce Austria, which we invited to this webcast uh, as well. So very welcome to one of our MCHAM talks uh, today around TV and advertising and media and all around very, very exciting topics. As announced previously, we, we, we had the, the plan and announced also that Gerhard Seiler would speak to us today. Uh, unfortunately, at and is in the quiet period before uh, announcing their half-year results. That's why he's not allowed to speak publicly as he is in a high-ranked executive position, meanwhile, in at and and we have postponed his appearance to a later stage of the year. <clears throat> so it's our pleasure to welcome today Walter Zingli. Walter Zingli is uh, managing director since 2013 of the RTL media marketing agency IP Austria and he's also speaker of the genre initiative Screenforce Austria and as well president of the Austrian chapter of the International Advertising Association. It's really a pleasure to have you here uh, for a very very interesting topic uh, your keynote will be around Bewegt aus der Krise, die wirtschaftliche und gesellschaftliche Rolle von TV in Krisenzeiten. I think a topic which uh, moves us all at these times, as we are really in a crisis mode, have been in a crisis mode, and seems so that we, it will somehow pro prolonged uh, over the next months. In, in various stages, this crisis situation, as we, we live in very, very dynamic and turbulent times. Just some few words on, on, on your professional background. You started your career in, in advertising and media at Publicitas and Ogilvy and & Mather and Publicis. And in 2002, you took over the managing director role at ORF Enterprise. And since 2010, you lead the Maxus Media Agency as CEO in Austria. IP Austria uh, is representing RTL, Sky Sport Austria, R9, Schau TV and Kronia T. Uh, and I hope I don't have forget any, any more of this, but for sure you will, you will correct me in your, in your speech. So very welcome to us. We are excited to listen to you. To all who are listening, if you have questions, we will have a Q&A as always at the end. Uh, please use the chat room of Zoom for putting your questions or raise your hands and we will make sure that you will get the voice after the keynote of Mr. Zingli. Mr. Zingli, the stage is yours. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Martin. Uh, first of all, thank you for not mentioning that my starting year in the advertising agency was 1981. It's Hopefully makes me look a little bit young, younger. Uh, secondly, I apologize. Uh, the only thing I have in common with Gerhard Seiler is the starting letter of my surname. Uh, he is definitely of a different weight than mine. Uh, but thank you, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, what I would like to share with you are some thoughts on television within uh, the situation uh, we all are facing now. It is a difficult period. Uh, it's a crisis, but as, a, as crisis is defined, there is an end of a crisis and we have to start to look what happens afterwards. First of all, allow me some words on Screenforce Austria. It's basically a, a genre initiative uh, of German, Austrian and Swiss media uh, in the uh, ex expression of sales houses for television. It means that we uh, represent more than 95% uh, of the TV advertising market in the German-speaking countries, or the Dach region, as we call it in German. Uh, in Austria, uh, the, the partners are 
all represented in HTTP, which means it's ATV, it's Goldbach Austria, it's IP, and we are representing uh, the channels you have mentioned, plus all the channels uh, which are produced by the uh, Mediengruppe RTL in Deutschland, which means we also have Vox and Super RTL and Nitro and RTL2 and you name it. Obviously OAF and OAF Enterprise is part of it, also our best beloved enemies of Pro7 Sat1 Pulse 4 GmbH <clears throat> and also Servus is part of it. What we are doing is basically supporting media agencies and advertisers uh, to get the best from TV uh, and moving pictures because TV in our uh, abbreviation doesn't stand for television but for total video. Uh, we try to deliver neutral facts and figures when it comes to the media research in Austria but also worldwide. So going into the uh, topic, uh, what I would like to show you is how TV is unbeatable in terms of reach, in terms of resilience, in terms of popularity and in terms of impact and effectiveness. Let's start with reach and there is no, nothing better a salesperson can do than to quote their clients. Marisa Talberg from Taco Bell said, TV is still really powerful for us. It is still the most mass reaching audience and it still works for us. There have been other companies uh, different from Taco Bell, companies who tried to avoid mass media uh, in their marketing and media planning. Uh, but then, and Adidas for sure was one of uh, them. Adidas had a uh, marketing mix basically founded on uh, online uh, media. And then came December 2019. And then Andy Pilkington, the media director of Adidas Europe said, more targeting is positive, but it's important not to lose sight of the power that television has as a broadcast medium for one message to everyone. So we love clients who stay with us for all the time, but we also love clients who come back to us, as you can imagine. So let's see why they came back to us. And it's very simple. TV is the fast track to reach consumers all over the world. You see that color means more than four hours uh, TV usage a day. This color means three to four, and this color means two to three uh, hours. So in Austria, uh, we have three hours and 26 minutes. Japan has four hours, 39 minutes. And now you have the full picture and you can look all over Europe. Uh, we have a viewing time uh, and the daily reach of 70% of the total European population. And the most astonishing thing when I talk to uh, consumers and uh, people of the marketing industry is that the daily viewing time of the we has increased since 1993 by 30 minutes, which is half an hour, uh, which is an episode of a series or whatever. Uh, and that is, although everybody thinks that TV is dying. I mean, personally speaking, uh, I hopefully die as slowly as TV is dying since 15 years, because since 15 years I hear TV is dying. So when I start to die and I get the same speed as TV, I would forecast my life uh, ending for 150 years, which, which would be quite, quite nice to experience. So these are the cases of the facts and they are undisputed because what, what is a, uh, an issue here is uh, that you can find that all over the world. You see here 66.5% uh, of the Austrian population is reached per day. And if you go to a monthly basis, it's close to 100%. But that is not only the case in Austria, that is true for Germany too. 66.8 on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, 95.2%. And if you look to the United States, 64.1 per day, 88.9 on a monthly basis. And obviously, uh, this is one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, I don't ask you to believe me. The only thing I ask you is to check out the figures. All of them are available on our homepage. All of them are based on scientific, uh, neutrally uh, done and objectively provable uh, research. And you can check in each and every detail. And so therefore, don't trust me. Just take this as a kind of a 
starting point of your own investigations and then find out uh, how powerful television still is. TV is resilient uh, and due to all the discussions we had during the last couple of years and obviously we had a decade of potential disruptions and I show you how these disruptions uh, came on. TV viewing on a TV set has, remarked, uh, has remained remarkably stable. Again, Andy Pilkington, uh, TV is in a naturally strong position as the pendulum swings back to brand, brand building. The time of all short term, short term uh, promotional get in, get out uh, uh, advertising and marketing efforts seem to be swinging back to uh, those uh, simple things like building a brand, building trust with, the, uh, with your consumers, be there when they want you to be there, and also be there when you probably have a kind of difficult time. Because it's like in a partnership, uh, everybody wants to be with your friend when everything is happy and the sun is shining but the real friends are also staying with you when it's raining and storming. So hours of linear TV viewed on a TV set per day. And I start here in 2007 and the last year is 2019. And I know it's, it's, it seems to be like iPhones and iPads are with, films, are with us since ages. Actually the iPhone was launched in 2007 and the iPad in 2010. Uh, Netflix is on the market since 2015, which is five years. So you see here, uh, Instagram was launched 2010. And although all these interrupters, theoretically, because they are also offering uh, moving pictures uh, on their uh, apps, although all these interrupters were launching and were coming, the, the hours of linear TV viewed on a TV set per day was steadily growing from uh, below uh, up to uh, from two hours, 37 minutes to three hours, 26 minutes. And that although in 2007, 2008, we had 69% internet users in Europe, and in that case in Austria, and now we have 88%. So what happened? is that media usage and obviously a channel uh, like internet is somehow a channel of all media. People use it to watch television, to listen to radio, they use it to see Snapchat or TikTok or whatever. So media usage in total has increased. Uh, I don't know what people stopped to do so they found time to increase their media usage, but something they must have stopped because otherwise that wouldn't have been impossible. But the, the, the strong message is the usage of TV on the big TV set, mostly in the living room, has increased. And that is something which, again, you don't need to trust me. Go into the details, go into the studies, uh, ask somebody in your team to check that out, and then trust their figures, which you can uh, really prove. The popularity of TV in Austria is unbeaten. 85% of the, of the time spent on video consuming is spent on the television set. You see here in the population 14 plus, 76% of all the uh, time spent of consuming video material is on live TV. 4.2% are on playback TV and 5.2% are spent on broadcaster video on demand platforms. And all these together, this is broadcasters uh, content, uh, adds up to 85%. Other online video <clears throat> is 13.1% and all that does include YouTube and Facebook and Snapchat and, and you name it, uh, Amazon uh, Fire, everything is in there. So it's 13% versus 85%. So nobody shall tell me that uh, television is dying. And again, uh, this is not my message. I didn't do that uh, in a sample of uh, my five best friends or my uh, 10 most TV using employees. This was done 
uh, by RTR, which is the Radio and Telecom Regulation uh, Authority in Austria, together with HTTD on a yearly basis, uh, and we see stable figures. So uh, it's just a fact that it is here. And then came what we call the lockdown or the corona crisis or COVID-19 or however you call it. And here you see, these were the viewing minutes of the calendar week 12. Uh, obviously, was the was the calendar week of the of March 16 when we all remember that date when suddenly we had to stop uh, work in our offices, stay at home, uh, don't leave your home, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This line shows the viewing time in minutes in the population 12 plus in 2019, and this in 2020. So what happened in the time of a crisis? Uh, people need information, of course. Uh, and when people need information, this is where they go. It's television, used more than before COVID-19. Uh, it's streaming VOD, 40%. It's radio, 22%. It's newspaper, 17%. But they don't only need more information, because we all remember, we stayed at home for uh, eight to 10 weeks. Uh, we were in home office. Uh, and I personally, after week four, I couldn't hear the, the expression Corona anymore. And although news is part of my life, I also was keen for some entertainment. And that is what happened because people don't only went to, uh, went to uh, television for information, they also went to, to television to get entertained because don't forget uh, the biggest uh, one of the biggest themes in, in, in television and video usage is live sports. Live sports didn't happen anymore. So people were looking for something else. Where did they find it? They found it on television. Uh, and just one sentence to the uh, to our friends at uh, YouTube, Facebook, uh, TikTok. I have better names than friends for them, but uh, the uh, code of conduct in video conferences doesn't allow me to, to, to tell you how I call them normally. Uh, the trust people put into the information of television is much, much higher then they put into the uh, information they get from online services or social media. And in the uh, midst of the, of the crisis, uh, the so-called fake news, which we, I think that expression we, uh, was invented by the actual president of the United States, which we, really have, which we are really thankful for him, at least for that, uh, that became so difficult and in some, in some cases, even so dangerous that even the uh, commission president of the European Union stood up and said, there is an enormous amount of fake news about the coronavirus, not only, but above all online. So it is not only that uh, people go to television for, for information, they also trust what, what they see on television because they know it is not something somebody heard and is now duplicating. They know in television, it is still all the principles of good and, and well-performed journalism. It's check, it's double check, it's recheck, it's go to the sources, find out if the source is reliable, and then put it uh, on the screen. So people, trust TV content, but they don't only trust the TV content, they also trust advertising, which appears on television. Across Europe, TV and radio are the most trusted channels for advertising. It's 57% of the total population in the European Union are trusting information they get on television, 49 on radio, 46 on newspapers, 32 they get online, and 20% information they get from social media. And from my point of view, thanks God, 
they found out how trustfully uh, information on social media is. So that is, again, a fact. Don't trust me. Don't believe me just because I'm saying it. Go out, check out the facts, uh, and then act accordingly. In our, uh, from our point of view as a sales house, consumers are important, but our advertisers are as important as well. So impact and effectiveness is not only trusted by consumers, but also by brands. Because brand safety, make sure that you know where your uh, communication piece is appearing, that it appears, that it is seen by people, and not by bots or computers or whatever, that it's really there, that it's regulated. Make sure that if you are advertising, for example, for children, also the content around the advertising is made for children and made in a proper way so that you don't have to be afraid as, uh, as, as a parent or, or as a grandparent. And also that the measurement you get about the uh, TV advertising is trustfully. It's not done by the uh, television uh, stations themselves. It is a neutral source. You can go there, you can check the figures, you can challenge the figures, you can find out what happens. And that is the big difference. I mean, by the way, as we are just talking about our friends of Facebook, who is telling us that Facebook has 1.6 billion users all over the world? Nobody else than Facebook, because it's a walled garden. Nobody knows, nobody is in a position to check that figure on a neutral basis, to find out uh, how they measured it. Is it everybody who, who, who appears on the, on the social media site for one second, for five seconds, for 10 consecutive minutes, or once a day, or once a week, or whatever? Nobody knows. Because it's a walled garden. And by the way, it's the same for YouTube and other social media issues. So brand safety uh, is a big issue for us. Uh, and it is a big issue for our advertisers. Because transparency, viewers threat, trust, regulations, and measurement, that really is a must for any advertiser. And you just can see what happens. I mean, the the issue of fake news and not trustworthy news at Facebook became so big uh, that right now companies like Unilever or the North Face are putting off all their advertising from Facebook. Just because they say, yeah, to be 100% to be neutral for one month, and they use that as a kind of... Uh, Please hold the line. Bitte job. warten. Please because hold the line. Bitte warten. Hold the line. Bitte warten. And then uh, we will come back. Because obviously Facebook is a powerful uh, medium. But clients simply don't trust them right now. So they put out their money, use it as a whip saying, we're now going out for one month. But you, you, need, to, you need to take care about your case. Impact and effectiveness. This is an interesting uh, chart here, and it will, it would talk, it, it would need uh, some 10 minutes to really explain uh, how it is uh, researched. It is uh, from Karen Nelson Fields, uh, a professor of, on the Center for Amplified Intelligence in Adelaide, in Australia. And she has done a, a big study not all reach is equal. These figures here are from Australia. In the meantime, she has done it in the US, in the UK. And as this little button here says, the DACH edition, the research which we uh, were doing during the last four months in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, uh, they will come soon. And basically what she was trying to find out is how long is the memory of uh, messages on Facebook, on YouTube, and on TV. And just to make the, the basis uh, neutral to everybody, all of those messages and channels seen on a mobile. So it's not 
the big screen in the living room versus uh, the smartphone in your hand with uh, Facebook. It's really the same. Uh, and here you say <clears throat> that, TV, that the TV ad retention is so strong that it generates a greater impact 28 days after showing the message than Facebook and YouTube do immediately wow. for the exposure. Uh, so, yeah. Any question just in the in interrupting or do we wait for the Q and A session at the end? Uh, we wait for, we wait for the Q and A, Mr. Team. Okay. I just uh, want to ask everybody who is not speaking to go on mute. We have some background noise and uh, it it's, would be better to be on mute, please. Thanks. So I just have three or four slides uh, and then I'm uh, ending it. Uh, and all of that, what I said up to now, that uh, TV has the reach, it has the trust of the consumers, uh, it delivers the advertising results. That's not only known by TV stations and their sales houses or the market. Of course, that's also known by the online advertisers itself. I mean, here, an impact, uh, an interesting chart of advertisers, which are 100% based online. Yeah, I mean, there is no Trivago outlet you can visit. It's all online. And see here how they spend in TV and how they spend in digital. Trivago spends 95% of their advertising money on television and 4.3% online. Priceline, 86% versus 13%. And these are the companies, they are measuring everything. I mean, really, literally everything. They know on which online platform their customer uh, was three weeks ago and how many bookings uh, he is doing uh, in the next two days, etc., etc. And it's not only that the online advertisers are here, uh, even the big names like Amazon, like Apple, like Netflix, uh, Zalando, Parship, their TV investments have grown more, from my point of view, more than significantly. Uh, in only three years. I mean, 28% increase from 108 millions to 139 millions in 2019. I mean, they know what they do normally. <laughs> and what they do, they advertise on television. And I think they know why. And w one thing, just as a side sentence, we see whenever they are in a crisis or sorry for that bad word, when, whenever they are in deep shit because there is a, a real scandal like uh, we had with Facebook, with, uh, with the Cambridge Analytica issue or other things, then they spend up to 50% of their advertising money on television. So they really know why they do it. And here is, I think it's my last chart, uh, a very, very interesting uh, segment uh, not as much in Europe. Uh, we see it here, but we don't see it as big as we see it in the United States, the so-called direct-to-consumer brands, young brands who say, okay, dear customer, uh, you like to try us. We are not available in retail. We are just available online. So direct-to-consumer brands. Uh, and these are brands who are, again, basically have grown up uh, with online media, with social media uh, platforms, they really see what piece of their communication effort brings how many customers to their platform. This is the development of those direct-to-consumer brands uh, from 2013 to 2019 in the United States. So it has almost tripled and it ends up in 2019 by almost 4.4 billion US dollars. So that is really money. And all these companies, they don't do it because they have invented TV advertising like Procter & Gamble, or they do it for 40 years like Unilever, or Mars always has been on television, therefore we spend so much on television. These are young brands. They are here for two, three, four years. 
they have grown up in an environment where online and social media uh, was their starting platform. But they find out if they want to come through that, uh, as we have that expression in German, the glass ceiling, and really want to go mass market and want to be successful on, on mass market, they need to go to television. So adding up uh, my presentation, I would think uh, television in the sense of total video, because today we don't care on which uh, on which gadgets the uh, consumer is watching our content. It still, in the most cases, is the big screen uh, in the living room, but we also welcome him on a laptop, we welcome him on a tablet, on a smartphone, whatever. Uh, and thanks God, we have been uh, in a, or we, we developed uh, the possibility that for our customers, for our advertisers, for the brands who advertise on Total Video, we also can follow the consumer on all these different gadgets and, 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 and channels. And uh, that helps us, especially in comparison to our colleagues in the print sector who have been a little bit uh, yeah, unsuccessful in that area. And all that total video part basically is still the most effective and the most efficient way to reach consumers. And especially during the COVID crisis, we have seen that the consumers, although on a high level in their usage of television, have increased that in average in Austria by 40%. So when there is something which probably uh, is not known, they don't know how to handle, maybe they are afraid from, where do they go? They go to the medium they trust. And that's very simple, is television. I hope I didn't bore you. I hope my English uh, was not too Austrian uh, for those of you who are native speakers. Uh, I hope I could show you what we call the magic of total video. And I'm very happy uh, to answer your questions. And thank you again for the invitation. Thank you, Mr. Zingi. Thank you very much. So I would open up for questions. If you have questions, just give us a sign in the chat or I would like to, to open up with a question. I mean, listening to you, the impression is we shouldn't be worried at all for advertising on TV. Mm -hmm. Do you see differences between private TV channels and publicly owned TV channels like OF and the private channels? Uh I mean, that is a question. I'm, I'm here as a, as, a, as a speaker of Screenforce, which does include both, uh, both private channels and, uh, and uh, public, public owned broadcasters. Uh, that is a question which, uh, from my point of view, has to be put into the societies who decided uh, to spend a certain amount of money for a public service broadcaster because all over Europe, you have very, very different uh, solutions for a public service broadcaster. There are uh, countries like in the UK, where the BBC is not allowed to distribute any advertising at all. There are countries like Germany, which say, okay, you may spend a, or you may distribute a certain amount of advertising minutes until a certain time, which in uh, Germany is 7, uh, 59 minutes and 59 seconds uh, in the evening. And after 8 p.m., there is no advertising anymore. Uh, I think it is undisputed, even with my friends at OIF, that the Austrian uh, legal situation is the, one of the most liberal all over Europe. Uh, obviously, all public service broadcasters do have some limitations in their advertising, 
and that makes that makes them let's say a little bit less flexible in a crisis on the other hand again i'm i'm, I'm the first to 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 admit that the information service of a public service uh, uh, broadcaster is highly evaluated uh, with the consumers so the average increase of 40 percent i told you we had in the tv usage in austria for tv uh, for news uh, formats at OAF that went up to 90 and 95 percent mm. so i think the, the, the question is not uh well the, the, the question really for every society is what do i want from my public service broadcaster and then how do i finance him do i ask him to get some money from the advertising market uh, or not at all do i uh, finance him via a fee system like in Austria or a household uh, calculation or directly out of the budget or whatever. I mean, but the first question every society has to ask itself is mm. what do I want him to do? Why do I put money into a system which is called public service broadcaster? Mm. But in terms of, uh, of, uh, uh, the advertising market and in, in, in its acceptance of private or public service for an, an advertiser, they don't care. They want the viewer. They want a big part of their target group to get acquainted to their message as soon as possible. And they don't care if it is on the screen where a program of a public broadcaster or a private broadcaster uh, is, uh, is doing their job. Advertisers just want their consumers or access to their consumers, better to say. And my, my, my question was, was towards more this direction as if I may, may recall correctly, I, I'm hearing TV channels complaining that they're losing ground in advertising against online. Listening to your presentation, they shouldn't be worried because uh, advertising in TV is growing uh and has a, a fixed place so can you bring this in perspective whether i missed something out here uh somewhat somewhat advertising in tv uh in europe is stable uh but uh the advertising amounts the advertising money which goes into facebook youtube uh alphabet tiktok uh, instagram etc etc is growing by far higher than our stable figures. So obviously there is a kind of uh, concern that advertising, advertisers are putting more and more money into the Facebook, Googles, et cetera, of this world. Uh, I, I don't know if we want to discuss the, the, the possible reasons for that here, but that is why we do uh, presentations like that. This is mm -hmm. why we put, uh, uh, service together like that and the presentation was basically a melting pot of dozens of, of service we have done all over the world uh, and usage is not in danger uh, obviously we are concerned about the uh, advertising spending mm. uh, behavior of mm. of the advertisers yeah okay thank you. thank you other questions from the audience please I have a question. Please go ahead. Um, just I'm trying to understand, you know, television and radio in comparison with, uh, yeah, Snapchat, TikTok, and so on. Uh, I think people that are on these devices are really watching or doing something. When you're on YouTube, you're doing something on YouTube. When you are uh, updating your status on whatever social medium, your full attention is there. Um, I know when you walk, oh, walk into a living room the television may be on but there could be five people on they're all on their telephones or on another device so how do you know that when the tv is actually on that someone is actually watching it and paying attention to it because my experience is like i'll walk in even to my mother-in-law's house the radio is on the television is on but she's in the garden or she's in 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 the in the kitchen it's just this background noise 
being a single woman or, you know, a lot of people do live alone and they just like to have this noise going on. So how do you assess that people are actually tuning in or is it just on as a, yeah, noise maker? Yeah. Uh, I have two answers for you. One of them is a more, uh, let's say, uh, easy one. Uh, the easiest way to find out if uh, somebody has watched television or just used it as a background noise is if you enter on Monday your office uh, and you ask somebody if he has seen the soccer match, uh, the golf tournaments, uh, the entertainment series or the TV show. Uh, and suddenly you will find out how many people have watched TV. So this is more a kind of uh, uh, jokey uh, uh, answer. The, uh, seriously speaking, uh, of course there are, there, there may be situations where people are not sitting in front of their TV sets. Uh, on the other hand, if they do some, some, something on, on, on TikTok or on uh, Snapchat or on Facebook, and we, from our point of view, we, we are much more in the advertising area. We are sales house. Yeah. So, uh, if they are on Facebook and something appears in their timeline uh, and this is, let's say, a spot with moving pictures, theoretically sounds, but they don't hear it. They flip over it after three seconds, uh, whilst on television, 98% of all people both have sound and video on. We measure if they have seen 30 seconds of the TV commercial or just 10 seconds or just five seconds. Uh, and again, uh, I think the easiest, the easiest answer to your question is, uh, if TV and radio wouldn't be used, why are Facebook uh, and Alphabet and Netflix putting their advertising money behind TV? I would think they know why. Was this, this an, was this an answer to your question? Yes, yeah, sure. I'm just curious of where the trend is going also for, for younger people as well. Um, you know, with the rise of Netflix yeah. and Amazon, where there is no really commercial. You just go in, you tune in, you watch your, you, you know, you, you, you watch five episodes of a series and then yeah. it's over and then you're, you know, that's it. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, Youngs, young people always have been using less television than older people. I mean, uh, I'm 58 now, and I remember when I was 16, uh, I had different things to do during my evening time than sitting uh, at home and watching TV. And I think the same thing is true now. If you compare the usage figures uh, of media in total uh, with youngsters, with the young generation between 12 and 18 of today, and of 10 years and 20 years and 40 years ago, you will see there is a huge increase. Obviously, that is not uh, on uh, what we call classic media like television or uh, newspaper or magazines. It never had. It never has been, sorry. Uh, the, the thing with advertising uh, breaks, uh, there are uh, VOD platforms where there, where there is advertising. Uh, some of the... Uh, of the platforms uh, do have a dual system saying living from fees and from advertising. Uh, advertising isn't a, uh, a kind of uh, attention breaker anymore. Uh, people cr grew up with advertising and the big question and I'm unable to answer it right now and nobody really can is what happens with those youngsters with the 10 to 18 or 18 to 25 when they continue in their life cycle, will they still be favorite YouTube or Netflix users when they are in their university education, afterwards entering a job, building a family? Will they still adapt the media uh, usage habits of their, of their younger period or will they transform? Nobody knows. I can't, I can't tell you, uh, frankly speaking, uh, but it's very, very interesting to find that out.
Was that an answer to your question? Yes, yeah, I think it will be interesting. I mean, younger generations are always the wild card. Uh, with every new generation comes a, yeah. a new mentality, um, whether they revert back to older generation mentality. Exactly. As someone who spent a lot of time working with young people, I highly, I mean, I, I, I doubt it. I mean, anything is possible, but uh, I, I, don't, I don't see it personally, but I could be, I could be wrong. Yeah, as I said, nobody really knows it. Uh, one, one thing to YouTube, I mean, we, we also speak here about a kind of walled garden uh, because everything we know in you, about YouTube is what they tell us. Uh, and they do some, sometimes they do distribute some of the usage figures. And if you analyze those distribution figures, then you see that uh, something around 50 to 60% of the total usage of YouTube uh, is generated by eight to 10% of the total users. So they do have a, a kind of heavy, heavy, heavy user uh, share, which is responsible for a lot of their usage. Uh, they, they definitely have changed uh, how media is, is, is consumed with the young generation. That is growing through the, uh, through the ranks uh, without any doubts, uh, even when my vacuum cleaner doesn't work, I don't call the service organization. I go to YouTube, uh, enter Dyson, repair, and I have a look to it. So, I mean, additional media channels are bringing additional media usage. That's it. Thank you. It's an it's a interesting topic. Thank you. Do we have more questions for Mr. Tingi? That's okay. Seems not to be. Okay, with that, thank you very much. We close it for today. Thank you very much for your interesting insights in uh, advertising in media channels, TV, video, online, whatever. Uh, I just want to announce our next MCHEM talk. We will now go in summer break for July and August to somehow, like I think we all will do. And we will restart the series on the 18th of September. And on the 18th of September, uh, we will have Dr. Alexis von Hönsbrech, CEO from Austrian Airlines as guest speaker. Uh, a segment of the industry heavily, heavily impacted by the current situation. And it will be really, really interesting to listen to him and to see, to get the latest update on, on the situation. So thank you very much for dialing in and watching us. Thank you again, Dr. Zingli, for having you today. And I wish you all